So this is the seventh video in Revit to Real. This one's going to be pretty short, and this is simply looking at checking and corrections um, in the STL file that you're getting from Revit. So this is the same file that we were working with just a little bit ago uh, in video six. I've made one modification to it simply so that it will slice the model um, for, for creating previews um, in terms of what's physically going to be built by the MakerBot uh, Replicator 2. And that is I've removed the chairs um, from the view. So if we open up the Revit file, um, I did a quick export removing all of this geometry. It takes about a minute to build that file, and it's something you don't really want to wait for in the video. So I'm going to do a quick preview on this and evaluate what it's going to look like. So any time that I'm doing a finished model, and in the first and the massing model, I was always recommending using the low settings with the raft. But any time that I've got a larger surface area, like these floors that are going to be exposed, I found that using standard uh, as a setting is going to give me a much cleaner finish across that surface. So I'd recommend that. And again, always run a preview before you send your final print. So I'm going to click Preview Before Printing and hit Export. This will only take a second to process. So it's doing the slicing right now to give me my layers. And I always come in and evaluate this because Revit is a little bit notorious for creating some coplanar geometry. And the STL exporter doesn't really do anything to help clean that up. So if I zoom in on this, what you can see are the actual lines of filament. So this is exactly, this is a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And if you see anything weird on this, you are definitely going to get some weird things happening in the print. So if I toggle this through my layers, again, I can see my base for the raft right through there. And then this is the beginning of the physical model. Uh, and you can see the infill pattern for the stage area on the model right here. And that's coming right on up with walls. And one of the oddities that I do notice is, you know, again, how these walls decided to merge. There's some weird breaking that's happening right here. I'm not terribly worried about that because those are sort of edge to edge things. I don't really see any gaps. But what I did notice the first time I processed this model is a pretty large hole running right underneath this wall. And if you think about how um, the FDM extrusion process works, it's going to be trying to put that filament, you know, sort of, you know, just on air. And again, like I've said before, gravity works. So I know this is going to, you know, cause a big mess there. There's going to be a lot of draping, things like that. So, you know, at times I I've had students say, well, I'll just run it with the supports and not worry about cleaning up the model. But let me show you what happens with supports. Supports are great for certain situations, but the Rep2 is perfectly capable of handling this little overhang with the door. If I run that with supports, that is going to be an absolute monster to get all of that stuff cut out of those doors. Uh, unless you have sort of a dual uh, head extruder that gives you a water soluble material or something like that, you would farther just have that span and not run this with supports. And really, you know, this is a good check to, to, to your, your Revit modeling skills to see how clean of a model you can make. So let's bounce back into Revit and see what the problem is. And you can see it right here. That little floor slab right here is intersecting through that wall. And again, when we're looking at an STL file, we're looking at something that the computer is trying to resolve. This is solid and this is void. This is going to be a solid chunk of plastic and this is a void. This overlapping geometry creates a problem. Um, and this type of thing happens often in Revit. You start thinking about a mullion against a wall, um, two floor slabs that connect. All of those can cause some problems. So you always want to be very careful in terms of how you're putting things together. And always do that preview check inside of the, the MakerWare software. So I'm just going to click Edit in Place really quickly. It's about a two second fix on something like this where I would like to select that piece, that extrusion right there, and you can see it's clearly in the wrong spot. So I'm just going to edit extrusion, pull that to the right location, finish the model. Seems good. Add-ins, STL, save, Camino export one. Yep, I want to replace it. Delete it in MakerWare. And I'm going to add it back in, Camino Export 1, move it to the platform, 
set my scale 158.69 so I'm a 16th inch model now and let's run the preview one more time make no supports standard resolution preview export and let's take a look at that problem area yeah, just by putting those two things together, you can still see there's still some resolution that's happening right here in terms of how those two things connect, but that's a much cleaner looking model. I don't have any supports to worry about, nothing to, to sort of chunk and clean out of there. That piece is ready to go. I also know it's going to take about three hours to print. Uh, in our experience, that's usually off by not a lot, by maybe 15%, 20% in terms of the print time. It's probably about a two and a half hour print tops. So the final model has been loaded into the Replicator 2 from MakerBot and right now the process begins by laying down the raft. Uh, the first layer of the raft runs very slowly. Um, we're going to speed up the video so you're not watching two and a half hours of the printing here but as the uh, raft starts moving up the printhead starts moving significantly faster. Um, the first layer of the base is starting to be formed uh, and you can actually see we'll zoom in here in just a second you can see the hexagonal infill pattern that the rep2 uses so that it's not just a solid chunk of plastic as the model moves further up you can start to see the chairs taking place printed directly in place so no additional gluing of thousands and thousands of entourage elements so the walls are getting uh, are starting to move up and you can see where the door openings are going to be and again the Rep2 um, printing with PLA uh, spans over the top of the doors really really easily in windows we're, we're really easily doing about two inches uh, sometimes up to three inches without any draping at all and we can span a little bit further than that sometimes you have to sand out a little bit of draping and things like that from the filament but the final model looks like that so that's one of the six base pieces on this model that are all going to come together uh, to build the overall model of this project.